Good afternoon, this is Mr. Riley, and I will be lecturing on for CISD 2601 Lesson 1. Let's go ahead and take you there. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about the, the windows and the threat landscape. So, information system security in the CIA, tri CIA triad and your typical infrastructure for a Microsoft environment and some of the vulnerabilities you'll see with the Microsoft Windows environment. We're going to be talking about that. So you want to do defense in depth. That's having multiple layers in case something you put in place does not catch a threat. It's uh, defense in depth is a collection of strategies to make computer environments more safe because you have multiple layers. Information security main goal is to prevent loss. You don't want to have people have a data breach, you know, discover stuff. Most decisions require a balance between security and usability because you can make something very, very, very secure but it makes it very hard to use sometimes. Security controls are mechanisms used to protect information. So you have different types of controls. You have administrative, that would be like your policies and procedures. Your technical would be how you do set up your equipment, you know, how you set up your firewalls, how you set up your group policies. And physical is how do you protect your server room? How do you lock your building? Do you have security guards? Different types of function is preventive. That means you do this before it happens to keep it from happening. Detective, that means you're discovering when it's happening. And corrective is you're fixing the problem after it happened. Here's your CIA triad. You have confidentiality. Make sure only the people that are allowed to see it can see the data. Integrity, make sure that it has not been changed, whether in transit or at rest. And availability, make sure it's always available so you don't have a, de like a denial of service. So confidentiality, the assurance that the information cannot be accessed or viewed by unauthorized personnel. Examples of confidential information, your financial information, medical information, military plans. So you don't want people to see your financial information except for the people you say can't see it. Integrity is the assurance that information cannot be changed by unauthorized users. You know, they change your email and route to somebody else. Ensuring the integrity means applying controls that prohibit unauthorized changes to information. Example of integrity controls, security classification. We make it a lower classification, then we could read it. Or maybe a user's clearance. These are some of the controls. So we classify the data, and then we give users clearance to help prevent unauthorized people from seeing it. And availability, the assurance that the information is available to authorized personnel in an acceptable time frame when information is requested is, avail is requested is available. Examples of attacks that affect that would be denial of service. Hacktivist would be where, you know, they deface a website or stop you from doing your job. Microsoft Windows and, and applications in a typical IT infrastructure. What is an IT infrastructure? It's a collection of computers, devices like routers and switches, and network components that make up an IT environment. Also your servers, your maybe your virtual private network servers that allow you to telework and stuff like that. The cloud. So common infrastructure components, you have your client machines, whether it's Linux, Windows, Apple. Network segments, that would be your LAN segments like your patch cables going into your wiring closets, network devices, your routers and switches, your server, you know, and they're usually listed by function. Like if it's a web server, it has web software installed. If it's a DNS server, it has DNS software installed. Cloud-based offerings such as Microsoft Office 365, Microsoft Azure, where you're just touching the cloud going in there and and so much is going to the cloud now. I think Microsoft is starting to get away from doing home, you know, like organization-based infrastructure. So here's a picture of it. Like you have the internet, your perimeter network with a couple of these to represent firewalls. You have your VPN server. The, it encrypts the data before it goes out and crosses the internet. Uh, Active Directory. That is what has all the database for the users and computers. THCP server issues as IP addresses. 
the IEEE 8021X devices basically check devices to make sure they're in compliance. And they talk to the health remediate requirement server. It'll tell us it what's required. Registration authority, once it gets registered with it, it says, okay, this these computers are okay. And NAP, health policy server, this holds the policies you set up. What do you want to have them? You know, do they have to have, they must have their firewall turned on. They have to have up-to-date antivirus. They have to have ran a antivirus scan within the last, you know, 24 hours. If a computer goes into this network and it doesn't have that, it will be put in the restricted network and the remediation server will help it get back and make it healthy before it allows it into the regular network. Windows clients, client systems provide functionality to the end users. Basically, you guys, what you're sitting at, you know, your computer. Includes desktops, laptops, you know, your phones, tablets. Each application be deployed on a client system as either a thin or a thick client. A thin client is where you pull the operating system to the machine from the cloud or from a server. And a thick client is where it's all on the local machine, including, you know, software. Windows 10, the newest, most popular Windows client uh, OS, and there's different versions of that. Windows servers, uh, server computers provide services to clients. Common server applications are web servers, application servers, and database servers. The latest version right now is 2019. It's built on the same platform as Windows 10. Um, there's different types. You have essentials that can be Windows 2019 are essentials for small businesses, standard for most server functions and data center for their large scale, scale deployments. And as you go up to the different versions of server 2019, the price goes up. And then of course, like any software, Microsoft end user license agreement. And it's that software license that contains some Microsoft software licensing terms and, and you gotta accept it before you can use the product and it's located in the Windows folder on the Microsoft website if you feel like going through it. Actually, there's a software you can have run that through and it will look for key terms that you don't, you may want to be wary of. That's with any end user license agreement. Okay, some of the sections of that, you have to do updates saying that they'll provide updates, uh, network data and license internet usage, limited warranty, Exclusions from limited warranty, like something happens and it damages your computer, they're not liable and stuff like that. Okay. Okay, Windows threats and vulnerabilities. Some of the threats that are out there for a Windows machine. You Now, these are some different terms. Risk, any exposure to a threat. A threat is any, any action that could lead to damage or disruption of loss of data or the equipment. In the vulnerability, the weakness of an operating system or an application software that will allow a threat to get through. A successful attack, one that realizes or carries out a threat against the vulnerabilities. What's the risk of that? It depends on your organization, your data, location sometimes, depends on what it is. A threat is not necessarily dangerous. A fire in a fireplace is desirable. A fire in a data center is not. For damage to occur, there has to be a threat. Attackers look for vulnerabilities, then dev devise an attack that will exploit that weakness. Anatomy of a Microsoft Windows vulnerability, ransomware, basically malicious software that renders files, it encrypts files. Attackers demand payment, and then they'll give you, using cryptocurrency, and you give them, they'll send you the decryption key maybe. Well-known ransomware attacks, they got CryptoLocker, Locky, and WannaCry. And I'm sure there's more out there. Discover and Alice and remediation cycle. So, um, okay, so discover a vulnerability, you analyze it, and then how do you fix it? So this is basically, and it keeps going on and on because the threats will never go away. They just change. There's always, nothing will ever be 100% secure. Discovery, once an attack starts, attackers become inconspicuous as possible. Needs to compare suspected activity baseline to normal activity to detect anomalies. So that means 
have a baseline of your machines, your client machines, your server machines. You know, you don't have to do them all, but do a sampling and then see what normal activities are and compare it to when attacks going on and see what's causing it. Common method of accomplishing this is actually is to use activity and monitoring logs. Analysis, security information and event management, SEM tools. Basically what that is, is if you have thousands of machines and you're looking at logs, you can't look at all those logs at one time. So what security information and event management software does or tools, they pull all that data into one location and create reports so you can look at it and actually see you know, what the trends are, what to look for, and kind of like, and if there's multiple hits, they put it down to one and just gives you a number of how many of those are, if it's the same thing over and over again. Collect and aggregate security-related information from multiple sources and devices. Help prepare data for correlation and analysis. You know, if it's all coming from the same block of IP addresses, stuff like that. Current vulnerability and security bulletin database, you can refer to that to see. Helps you determine if others are experiencing the same activity. Remediation, cont contain any damage that has occurred, recover from the loss, and implement controls to prevent the recurrence. So, block certain IP addresses, maybe patch some servers, fix what is causing the problem. Common forms of attack, phishing, generally starts with a message that contains a link or an image to click, file to open, taking these actions launches malware attacks. Malware, malicious software designed to carry out tasks that the user would not normally allow. Maybe like feeding back information to, to somebody. Denial of service, any action that dramatically slows down or blocks access to one or more resources. Injection attack depends on the ability to send instructions to an application that cause the application to carry out unintended actions like an SQL injection is very common in SQL database you know, maybe delete files or delete tables in that database or pull information from it. Um, a threat, unprotected window shares. A situation allows stackers to install tools, including malicious software, steal files. Session hijacking and credential reuse attempts to attackers to take over a valid session or capture credentials and impersonate valid users. That's where, like, you close out from a session, but the session cookie is still valid, so they jump in or knock you out and uh, knock you off the net and take over your session. Cross-site scripting, specially crafted malicious code used to attack web applications. And packet sniffing, the process of collecting network messages that travel across the network in the hopes of divulging sensitive information such as passwords. And there are several unsecure protocols out there that you should not use or at least encrypt before you in use encryption with those. Okay, and that finishes up chapter one. Thank you.